All right, a short talk about uh, setup time and a D flip flop. D flip flop destiny for us right now is uh, is this one. Remember, in 429, your uh, homework uh, has uh, generally been just this transmission gate as your input, and then no buffers either for Q or Q bar or a buffer on D. Uh, if this is a general purpose D flip-flop, uh, the buffers on the inputs and the outputs uh, just makes the performance of your flip-flop uh, much more predictable. Uh, and then so that this node A is not sensitive to, uh, to noise. We have it buffered by D. Anyway, but this is the one that we're uh, looking at. I'm going to redraw this uh, as uh, a circuit that looks like this. So we've got our uh, original inverter. Okay, and then we have a switch and a resistor. This is our transmission gate. A transmission gate, remember, is um, uh, just a switch and it has a series resistance. It's an NMOS and a PMOS in parallel. That resistor is not a linear resistor, uh, but for our purposes right now, we can view that as a uh, just as a resistor. We have our forward uh, inverter here that in one way is buffering the, uh, the X node. I'll label my nodes uh, here. This is node A. This is node X. Okay. We have our feedback path. And I'm going to redraw this, because <coughs> this is how we've done it in electric, as an inverter. This is a tri-state inverter. Uh, we built an inverter followed by a transmission gate. So I'm going to draw the transmission gate, and what we're going to do uh, really carefully here is I'm going to say that this is switched on by our clock. Okay. But really, do you see what, it, what we have here? Phi is attached to this, so phi has to go low to turn the switch on. So really we're going to say clock bar. This is closed when when the, the clock is is uh, here. All right. So instead of having a transmission gate here, I'm going to act like I never uh, drew this. This whiteout stuff is pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't smell nearly as good as the uh, uh, liquid whiteout, but such is life, I guess. All right. So we're going to have another transmission gate with a resistor here. And then our clock signal is going to be, see how it's clock attached to the NMOS? This is phi. And notice that these switches are opposite. They're on at opposite times. This is closed. This is open. This is open. This is closed. And this comes back right to node X. Okay, we have this uh, feedback loop here, and that's an important part of how we uh, look at the delay through here. Another switch and a resistor. One more feedback loop. Inverter, switch, resistor, and what's attached here. Okay, so this is node uh, B and node C and node, what node was that? Q-bar, really. Q-bar. D. Three inverters uh, here. <clears throat> Alright, here's our input D. What happens is when D changes, let's just make D rise, is we have to propagate this signal through here. Okay. This is T, P, uh, D, which is the delay, propagation delay through our inverter. Remember also we have T, C, D, the contamination delay. This is max time and this is minimum time. Or rather, just think of this delay has a, uh, has a range. Uh, two values for it, data dependent delays. This is an inverter, so there's only uh, two possibilities, rise and fall time. 
or rising and falling uh, delays. So our signal D has to go through here. Let's say that our switch is closed at this point. So our signal goes through here. Remember, I want you to remember that at this node we have a uh, capacitance. Okay. You see that we have an RC circuit? Yes. I'm glad for the feedback. All right, so we have a clock. This is T, P, D for a transmission gate. Okay, we have an R charging a C that has a delay. Remember that. Uh, this is going to be R uh, TX times C times natural log of 2 is what that time is. Uh, it's an easy one. It's just a first order circuit. Next, this signal has to go from here to here. So this is TPD. Of course, we, we're just going to say that this has a range to it, so propagation delay and contamination delay. All right, that's great, but <clears throat> we're going for setup time. What needs to happen is we need, we have through here, we have through here to node X, we have delay from X to B. These are all short, but uh, that's kind of the point. But then we also have this delay, okay, this inverter delay, which might be different than this inverter, uh, inverter's delay. These, uh, there's not a reason that these two inverters have to be the same size. And notice that the capacitance at this output node is not necessarily the capacitance at node B, which is what makes uh, this inverter slow. All right, so this switch, uh, if we want to capture this, D has to be here, 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 here. Our signal, our change, we have an edge, we have an edge, we have an edge, we have an edge. That signal has to go through these one, two, three, four, uh, four delays. I'm going to also say that we have this one. Because as soon as this switch opens, okay, when our clock in this case will go high, the switch opens, and as soon as that happens, whatever node X is is going to get just kind of held there. And when I say held there, it's it's going to be this positive feedback loop, okay? So if node X is not risen enough, at, or we have this over here. This switch opens. This is, say, low. X was going high. Okay, X might have been high, but this is still too low because we've not propagated uh, around here. Then, as soon as this switch closes, this inverter is going to drop this node uh, X back to low. And then uh, B is going to be, of course, high because of the inversion. And uh, we will not have captured uh, the D that we wanted. All right, so our setup time is, <clears throat> if you trace the signals through here and the, the consequences of when we open and close these two switches, remember these phi and phi bar that's closed. So this phi is closed, clock is low, okay? Our signal propagates in here. It has to get all the way around here before this goes high. Remember, that's the edge of the clock, the rising edge of the clock. Uh, so our setup time is T setup TPD uh, I'll call this 1 plus TPD2 I'll label these here in a second plus that's the second one this third one TPD3 this fourth run through this inverter TPD4 okay and then plus TPD5 and once this node or this signal uh, gets here, uh, this one is a, is a question mark, remember. So here's, uh, here's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Okay, there's actually it's really not a delay through this R and C because if everything is settled properly, we say goes high, this is low, this goes low, 
this goes high, this goes low, so that when this switch closes, this node is low, this node is already low, because it was it happened first, and there's no current flow through this resistor. It just uh, stays there. If we close this switch too early, or rather our clock rises too early, this node uh, will not have gone low yet. It'll still be high, and it's going to drag through this RCX node up. It's going to blip up, and if it blip, blips up too much, it will get captured up there. You can see that in a uh, SPICE simulation uh, right by uh, measuring these internal nodes. Okay, so that's our setup time. We can estimate this, especially if you know what the capacitances are at these individual nodes. Thanks for watching.